the things that come against you, sometimes you're like, how can I survive this? How can I get through this? This is so intense. There are so many nights that I have, I've marched up and down my hallway when my kids run well and things are going crazy. And, and I just, yeah, just yeah. you having to position, position yourself in his goodness in the middle of a storm. And I remind myself over and over and over that I'm doing this with him and he's going he's gonna to make, help make sure that I finish well. That's right. That's good. I know uh, you are in a great transition. I know I'm in a transition. That's actually one of the most charismatic favorite terms besides glory yeah. is probably transition. Uh, but then, <laughs> Number two. you know, in midst of all, exactly, bam, bam. In midst of all these changes and all these transitions, you know, we're always moving, metamorphing, evolving. And if you're not, then you might be mm -hmm. dead. But, you know, we're always yeah. growing and things are always moving so fast around us. How do we stay in that place of peace and knowing that one Ooh. true voice Instead mm -hmm. of always just, you know, picking up all this other stuff and frantically losing our mind, how do we stay engaged in that place? You know, we, we, we can't ever move. We can't ever move from the fact that we were created to minister unto the Lord as priests. Um, and the one thing the Lord has continually said over and over and over to me in this season of so much change and transition is that go low, lay down. And um, wow. this this year, more than any other year, I mean, I know transitions being one of these words. Sure. Um, um, but for me personally, for our family, even, I mean, that word is is a reality. Where there's so many changes and things going on, people around us, friends, ministries, even even big leaders around the world going through intense transition. Yeah. And you can easily be distracted, or you can easily be overwhelmed by the weight all the, uh, just how many things are changing. You can get into that mode of trying to do damage control for the things that we're comfortable in that suddenly don't work, right? The relationships that aren't what they used to be, all those, it's every area is being affected. And the Lord just said to me, that's for me to take care of, lay down. And that's, it's, it's, it's like this season, the Lord is saying, if you will, if you will simply just lay down, go low in this season, make me your priority, I'll take care of all of those things. You can't do that. You don't have the map for it. You turn to a leader, a pastor in your church. Sure, they've probably been through transition before, but not like this one and not the way that it is for you. Yeah. People, people can encourage you. People can give you advice. But when it comes to when the rubber meets the road, the only way forward, the only way you're going to only way you're going to get through this thing is if you let go and lay down. And I've been saying that to our students. I've been saying That's that good. to just friends because it's the only way, you know? So good. So good. Absolutely. I know uh, that even when you're trying to increase, I mean, we're not trying, but even when you want to follow the Holy Spirit, you got to let go. You got to let go of the baggage. We are sending the mountain of the Lord. So we need to constantly uh, be engaged and be active with hearing his voice, you know? Uh, it's like we take a step forward and we respond yeah. because it's a relationship. You know, it's not a robotic, mechanical type of thing. No. But it wants our heart. So we need to be relational. So we're taking a step forward. We're taking a dance with him where we're co-partnering with him. And, uh, you know, I think that's where it can be very dangerous. And I'm sure you'd agree, Nate. It can be very dangerous where we're always trying to move, but our heart is far from it. And I believe God yeah. is interested in our heart, not just our works and our performances. And I think that's yeah. where a lot of people, uh, you know, even get burnt out. But we need to tap into the purity of God's voice, people of God. And that's how we mm. increase in the glory of God. So uh, uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit, uh, Nate, uh, how do we, you know, how do we, how do we stay engaged with, again, the purity of the voice as we increase in the glory? That's, that's been one of the, the, the biggest things that I think, you know, I remember reading those books years ago, you know, God's Generals. And I remember being so yeah. grieved reading that some of them didn't finish well. Wow. And I was like, I was like, God, like, and I remember very early on, even before we did ministry, it was, we were serving ministries and traveling with different ministries for years. And just a personal prayer of mine, was, there was two. And one of them was, God, I never want my anointing to be greater than my character. And yeah, the, second, on. the second one was, God, show me how to do this well so I can finish well. I don't want to lose my family along the way. Um, 
yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, fall into some, you know, sin ambush thing that comes up in my life because I'm not focused on your presence. And all those things are easy to do because the the warfare that comes on people that minister the word, like the, the warfare that comes on people who who choose that life uh, is so intense. I mean, I, I don't even need to tell you I'm preaching to the choir, but the you know we, we're not focused on the enemy, but but the level of warfare and the things that come against you sometimes you're like, how can I survive this? How can I get through this? This is so intense. There are so many nights that I have. I've marched up and down my hallway when my kids run well and things are going crazy and, and I just, yeah, just yeah. you having to position, position yourself in his goodness in the middle of a storm. And I remind myself over and over and over that I'm doing this with him and he's going he's gonna to make, help make sure that I finish well. And I say, I say this to the Lord all the time, like, um, just like Moses said, I won't go, I won't go without your presence. I won't go without your glory. Yeah. And so, so often um, there is the pressure, especially in this, you know, this kind of fake Christian celebrities thing, right? Where there's the pressure to, hey, we're going to invite you here and there. It's this person and that. And you feel the pressure to go and to be and to, sure. you know, and to perform, right? And the Lord's constantly bringing me back to this place of have I, have I sent you? Where's my glory going? Follow my Come glory. Don't follow, don't follow where man invites you. Don't follow where man's trying to lead you. Where's my glory going? Yeah. And I'm, my personal conviction is I'm following the glory. I'm following his presence. Nothing else will ever steal my gaze. And if we keep, our, if we keep ourselves in a place that, that it's all about keeping our eyes locked with Jesus, we can't, we, we can't go wrong. We can't miss it because we're not distracted, you know. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I, 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 you know, my gaze doesn't go anywhere else. I'm just saying that's that's where I'm that's where I'm fixed on. And and in regards to the purity of the prophetic, um, when God speaks, um, you know, making sure it, it comes from Him. It's not coming from oh, this would be great because I'm going to a conference. It's about this. I want to write a word about this. It's like what is He speaking? You're constantly fixed on His face and what He's speaking, and that's your source. It doesn't come from anywhere else. And if you, if that is your focus, the purity is there. That's good. That's so good, mm. Nate. So good. Uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, I, I like this question that the Lord just gave me here. I believe many people uh, are in the brink of the greatest uh, season of their lives. I really believe that. And that's why yeah. a lot of people have been uh, going through some sufferings and turmoil and resets and, and all this inner stuff, because God's about to bring many of you uh, into the greatest season of your life. Um, but how, how do you discern? I mean, you know, some of us, we may be in the best season of our lives, but how do we discern, uh, you know, like leaving things behind and saying, all right, I want to step into this new place, take a greater risk, because I feel that this door, this place has the great glory, has the new thing that God has for me, instead of going back into an old thing. How do we discern that it's an old thing and God wants to move us out of the old thing? And how do we uh, discern that it's a new thing or there is a new thing? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. In Leviticus 26, 10, 11, it says, um, it speaks about um, God removing the the old, God removing the old from the barn to make room for the new. And in the context of that, you look into it, it basically means that the, the grain that's in the barn isn't bad. So why would yeah. you get, why would you remove it? But God's like, hang on, it's not bad. You can still, you can still sustain yeah, you, but I'm, I'm clearing it to make room for the fresh and for the new. You think about the Israelites in the, in the, in the wilderness, that manna would only last for that day, then it would go bad. And I believe in this is a season that people are freaking out because they're like, well, hang on, that was good. Like, God, what I had there was okay. Like, I feel like that, what was wrong with that? Come on, God. Like, you know, my friendships, my, what, what was wrong with that? And he's like, trust me, it feels like the emptying right now. Wow, I feel like this is speaking to some people already. I just feel like, I feel like a lot of people just go, just hit their spirit. It feels like the emptying right now, but trust him. Trust his goodness because you, wow, the f fresh, something fresh is about to hit your life. 
something come fresh. You're going to feel every part of your life just come alive. You're going to realize when that fresh hits you, you're going to realize, wow, I, that, that was actually the area I was dead in. That particular area there, that I didn't even realize that was... I, that was not good. That was not in God's best. And when that fresh comes in, you're going to go, okay, God, like I, I, it's going to bring you up to another level of faith because you're going to realize that your emptying was simply the setup for this. Now, the Holy Spirit is filling your life afresh. Those relationships that, that, you know, it was almost like God's, God wants you to fire in all four cylinders in all cylinders in your life. And then right now it's like you're at a certain capacity and you're comfortable, but he's emptying it out because he's like, I know better. And I want to move you into, I want to see you fulfilled. I want to see you accomplish what I, what I placed on your life. I want the full measure of everything that Jesus did at the cross to be your norm. And so we need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable in a season that God is emptying us. How do, how do we know what is the old and what is the new? It's, it's almost like it feels like trial and error because you're constantly going, Holy Spirit. It's almost like you're doing the litmus test on it. And you're like, Holy Spirit, is this, is this, is this you? Is this the, is this got wind on it? You know, is God, has this got wind on it? And, you know, personally for me, this has been a season. I feel like I've almost taken a step back from making big decisions about, about, oh, I'm very hesitant in, in doing this certain thing or doing that. I, I want to make sure that what I'm going to say yes to carries the wind on it because I can very easily still partner with something that's old. It's not, it doesn't carry any glory. And um, well, actually, it does carry glory, but like you said, it's the greater glory that God's moving us into. And it's like, I'm not satisfied anymore with the matter of yesterday. And I'm constantly saying, oh. God, Remove my, remove my taste for the old and give me a hunger for the new. And when I'm in a church meeting, I'm not satisfied with, a, with, with just a meeting. I'm like, God, come and pour out. Like, wreck this place. I don't want to just come and have a great, good old little like, time in the glory. I want to see your greater glory because that's what my, I'm now inclined to. And I believe that comes, it goes down to every situation in our lives, relationally, in your marriage, in your finances. God's, God's saying, hey, like, like I'm positioning you to hunger for something that's greater than what you've seen. So how do you know? It's it's basically where have I settled? What are the things in my life I've settled in? That's good. God wants to God wants to increase and bring greater glory to those areas so that you're moving into a greater dimension of his blessing. So good. I know uh, even yesterday with our interview with David Herzog, besides all of you guys need to watch it. That was incredible. What David said was that many times a greater level of sacrifice, even sacrificial giving, the sacrifice will increase and intensify the glory. And a, a yeah, lot of times wow. people don't get into the greater glory because they're still holding on to the good, to the great. But, you know, once we lay it down, then uh, mm. we're going to step into the greater glory. So I feel like a lot of you that are listening to watch right now, the Lord's saying, lay it down, even as Nate said earlier, as you lay it down, as you let go, watch what God's going to do. And uh, I also believe that uh, the warfare, uh, many times it's not even from outward forces or sources, it's from the inside out, where God's wanting to mature us. You know, you're talking about yeah. uh, the greater glory, the new wine. But the Lord doesn't want to pour out the new wine unless we become the new wine skin, which means yeah. that there's a personal... Listen, there's a personal new wineskin and there's a corporate new wineskin. And every single one of us, we need to stretch personally to come into the right place of the corporate new wineskin. Because there is a corporate new wine that God's about to pour out. And that stretching, that uncomfortable feeling you, you're, you're going through, you're feeling, it's not just from the outside in, but from the inside out. Where there's a moan and a groan on the inside. And it's yeah. like, I want to grow you up. I want... I want you to let go and to trust in the voice and to pursue the more of God. And, uh, you know, I, I feel this, Nate. I feel like a lot of people right now, they feel like they're in this transition place, like the wilderness, and they're about to cross over into the promised land. But God's wanting to speak to you and say, don't settle in, in the wilderness. Don't settle here. Keep stepping forward and keep moving forward because your promised land is right there. But a lot of people, you're kind of like, yeah about to give up who am i talking to you feel like you're about to give up you feel like you know you're yeah. done you're burnt out you're toast but you know until we're we come to an end of ourselves that's when we actually begin with christ so that's what's going on right now yeah absolutely i mean we 
everywhere you turn, every single person you talk to, they're going through some level of change or transition. That not many may know the language of it. Um, it's one of my massive passions in this season is like giving people language for their wilderness, giving people language for their transition. Because if we realize that it's actually leading to our promised land, it will change your perspective. Um, I, I think about in this season for us, I, I think about, you know, how much opposition even comes in the middle of, in the middle of transition when you're about to step into something great. Um, you're going to look at that differently. You're going to start to rejoice. You're going to start to get excited if you realize, hang on a second, this might look really bleak right now, but hang on, something's coming. Because why? Yes, there's a corporate transition. There's a corporate thing that God's doing, but personally, he's just, he's just cleaning house and he's preparing me. My capacity is enlarging. It's like Isaiah like 54, enlarge the place of your tent. That's what he's saying right now. It's a, the paradox, it's a paradox uh, season because on one hand, you're looking at decrease and you're like, okay, how do I, how do I see that properly? That's decrease. On the other hand, you're looking at increase. You're looking at, and God's speaking over your life. Remember what I've spoken over you and, and decree my promises. And it's like, it speaks about in Timothy, about waging war with the prophetic words that have been spoken over your life. And you're like, which is it, God? And he's like, it's both. It's a decrease of what no longer, you can no longer carry with you into the promised land. And it's me setting you up with fresh vision, fresh eyes and fresh capacity to be able to walk in the promised once you're there.